Hello, and welcome to Portland State University's CTF Walkthrough Channel. This is the walkthrough for TWGRE1ART. Oh sweet, they made a spin-off game to Toaster Wars. That last room has a lot of flags in it though. I wonder which is the right one. Check it out here. That's a link. So here's the hint. Uh, it talks about a Node.js server, and, and it says if it's configured poorly, you may be able to access the server source. Now, this is going to be very important later on. Later on you'll see. So let's open up the game. So it looks like a fairly standard roguelike game. So beating it is up to you. You'll need to beat it to floor, the fourth floor. It'll take a bit of time and possibly a few tries. Not much I can help with, help you with there. Okay, now that you have successfully reached the flag room, now it's time to find the right flag. So first, if you still have any items, just use them all, get them, you don't need them anymore. Okay. So there's a bunch of flags here, if we pick one up, it says it gives you the flag, maybe. So uh, a word of caution, if you use the wrong flag, then all the other flags disappear. So. Don't just randomly try flags, it won't end well for you, unless you want to play the game uh, a few hundred more times to try to, you know, win. So, let's pick up a few flags. So, they're all identical, so how do we figure out which, which one is the right one? Now, here's where this hint becomes very useful. It tells us to look for the server source, that there is a special file that lists dependencies in a start command. Now, if you do a bit of research on node.js servers, you know that that file is uh, package.json. So now duplicate the game tab. This will create a new instance of the game. And uh, in the address, put a slash, then package.json. So this will access that file for you. And we were right. It was not correctly configured. So we can access this file straight out. That's good for us. So. This gives us a bit of information. Most of it we don't need. Uh, the important information, however, is this pre-start and start, which gives us uh, more files that we can access. So we can duplicate this tab as well. I like to have multiple tabs open. So duplicate this. And we go to server slash init.js, like they tell us to. And now it gives us this file, which if we look at it closely, we realize it's completely useless. But let's try the other one. Now, as you probably have guessed, this one's going to be actually useful. OK, so this file uh, is a bit more useful. Um, it might not seem like it at first. If you look at it, there's this require, dot, uh, require, uh, require the game file, game.js, that we can now access. And here's another file we can look at. It's very, very useful too. This one's actually very useful. This is the entire game logic. So everything you do on the client side of the server, on the client side of the game, gets sent to the server. The server will process these commands and do things according to this code here. So this code should somehow give us the flag if we have the right flag. So why don't we try control Fing flag to find some commands that have flag in it. So we find this case statement, which is a part of a bigger execute item use. In this case, the flags are items. So in the case that the item has the um, it has the effect of revealing the flag, it says that if the entity dot items dot effects dot check is sixty four, then the outcome is actually revealing Pico CTF's flag. Otherwise, nothing happens. So that gives us a big deal of help. And now all we have to do is go into console, which would be Control shift i in Chrome at least, then click to console. Then we can try putting what they told us to put. So what can we put? If we hit Control space, 
gives us a bunch of useless stuff. Um, if you experiment around a bit like I did, you'd know that you have to type state dot everything else. So, so the state is the game state. From there, we can go like state dot uh, player dot inventory. Ooh, dot, or no, not inventory, items dot uh, items, which is an array. So we can look at item zero, which is an object, which is named flag. Here's a description. Now let's look into item zero. We can look at its effects which is also an array. So now we can look at uh, the first element of that array, and that is an effect called reveal flag with a check of one. So this check is not 64, so this flag would be the wrong one. Uh, also, if you look at the second effect, that is destroy items. So this is what I mean by if you choose the wrong flag, everything gets destroyed. So look at this one, the check is one. That's not a right one. Let's look at the next item in our inventory. That has a check of zero. Check of three, check of four, check of five, check of six, check of seven. Ooh, do you see a pattern? The pattern is the numbers are increasing, which implies that all the flags in here are ordered by increasing numbers. So it should be fairly easy to find the 64th flag. So since none of these flags are having an uh, effect, have a check of 64, let's just drop them all and look for different flags. So close out this big window so you can actually see. And let's just drop these items one by one. Be careful not to press use. Just press Z over and over again. Oops. Press Z. And all the flags are gone. So we know that the flags are probably in ascending order. We can test this again by just walking down this line. So if they aren't in ascending order, say this flag is 13, then this one would be 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and the next one would be 19, 20, 20 21, 22, 23. So they'd be increasing in increments of 5 when we are walking down this row. So we've picked up three of them. Let's just check if we are right. It'd be state.player.items, first item, dot effects, and the first effect. So that one is 13. Oh, hey, I guessed it right. Uh, let's check the next item. That one is 18. And finally, the last one is 23. So clearly, the flags are in ascending order. So that makes our job a lot easier. So let's keep going down. OK, so now we can check. Oh, also, if, if you forgot, the shortcut is Control-Shift-I. So let's check our eighth item at index 7. And that is at 48. So we are still not quite there, and our inventory is full. So let's drop everything again. And keep going. Now where are we now? I think we're getting close. So let's check our first item. That's 53, as expected. 58. This one's 63. So the next one to our right should be the flag we want. Very good. So let's drop all the flags we have, because they're not right. So we pick up another one, and just because I'm anal, let's check that one, make sure. Uh, yes, that one is 64. Now let's cross our fingers and use it. And yay, a soft voice on the wind speaks to you. The secret you're looking for is the flag. Use it wisely. And all the items were destroyed. Oh, well, anyways, we got the flag. Happy endings. So here's our flag. Uh, uh, now let's paste it into here, and the challenge is complete.